Happening now, the governor in the fight of her life. She's now battling lung cancer. Yeah, she shared the diagnosis through a statement and later a video message. Because I always shoot straight with you, I want to share a recent challenge that has been placed in front of me. Within the past few weeks, during a routine exam, my longtime family physician discovered a spot on my lung that was unusual. Additional tests confirmed that this was indeed a tiny, isolated malignancy. Support still pouring in tonight for Governor Ivey following her life-changing diagnosis, both from Montgomery and from Washington. From Senator Doug Jones, Louise and, Louise and I want to join all Alabamians in offering our prayers and support for Governor Ivey and her loved ones during this difficult time. We know she's in good hands with the world-class physicians at UAB. House Speaker Mac McCutcheon says when it comes to fighting for what matters, Gov Ivey has proven time and time again that she is a tenacious warrior and that same steely will and determination will be in full evidence as she begins her radiation treatments. I know that all of the members of the Alabama House join me in asking for God's healing hands to embrace our governor throughout her treatment and recovery. Now we don't know what caused Governor Ivy's cancer, but it is common for smokers and non-smokers to develop the disease. WVTM 13's Bria Douglas is live at UAB Hospital where Governor Ivy will receive treatment tomorrow. And uh, Bria, you talked to a doctor at a different hospital about the importance of early detection. That's right, Sherry. Doctors at Grandview Medical Center say there's about an 80 to 90% cure rate when lung cancer is detected at stage one instead of stage four. Cancer is, a, is, a, is an enemy that you have to fight tooth, tooth and nail. Especially lung cancer. It's the leading cause of cancer deaths. And Dr. Franco says it's prevalent in the state. All kinds of um, industrial type exposures that people get here in Alabama, along with cigarettes that in combination will increase your risk of lung cancer. Limiting exposure to radon, asbestos, and secondhand smoke reduce your chances of getting the illness. If you're age 50 to 70, early detection is key. Dr. Franco explains symptoms commonly associated with the illness. A cough that doesn't go away, coughing up blood, uh, increased shortness of breath. There is an increased incidence of lung cancer in people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a, a really common problem. Cancer isn't an automatic death sentence. With a healthy lifestyle, Dr. Franco says the disease is beatable. Your pre-morbid status, you know, what kind of health are you in? Do you have other health problems? Are you active? You know, you, you know, is your appetite good? Weight? So there, there are all kinds of things that go into fighting cancer, as I, including your emotional outlook. Now, Governor Ivy will be at UAB Hospital tomorrow morning for an outpatient procedure, and she insists that her cancer treatments will not interfere with her work as governor. Live in Birmingham, Bria Douglas, WVTM 13. Lung cancer isn't uncommon. According to the American Cancer Society, it's the second most common case of cancer for both men and women. And most lung cancer statistics include both small cell and non-small cell lung cancers. This year alone, we've seen about 228,000 cases of lung cancer. It mainly appears in older people with the average age of diagnosis being 70. Some people with earlier stage cancers are cured. More than 430,000 people alive today have been diagnosed with lung cancer at some point. We'll continue to follow this developing story. You can find updates on the WVTM 13 app. Sign up for alerts for new information sent straight to your phone.